he's dirty. Is he naked? I just saw his butt. So that's a whole thing. We do that. I'm professional. Sometimes you gotta put makeup on the butt in other areas. So his teeth are really disgusting and creepy. They're sharp. Ooh, okay, this is great. So I'm obsessed with clowns. Like, as far as special effects goes, I could do clowns all day. Hello, I am Amber Tallarico, makeup artist of 13 years and also the owner of the What It Takes Makeup Artistry platform. And today we're gonna be looking at some bad guys. I'm gonna be giving some tips and tricks on different makeup looks that you guys can listen to and learn about throughout these videos. Oh, it's so funny because everybody's like, do a zombie makeup. And it's like, well, what kind of zombie are you talking about? Because <laughs> there's literally so many different types of zombies. Oh no, <laughs> so scary. Oh, Jesus. At first I didn't even know she was a zombie because she didn't have like any crazy stuff going on, but she still looks normal. She's definitely a zombie. The bloodshot eyes like where it's like all the way out, that's, a, that's usually done with a contact. Yeah, ew, yikes. So this is a really crazy creature. It's a little bit much. I think that a portion of it could potentially be done by an effects team. The glowing eyes is actually something that I've seen done before. There were actually like little LED lights that they put beneath the prosthetic piece. So you could see from a distance in the dark lit studio, this beast kind of like crawling to them. So you could achieve that. It would definitely be a whole beastly face. So that would be a very big build and then the body itself it's a lot and especially the more it's crawling it does become a lot and i think that it would eventually go into the hands of cgi for very specific parts of that particular motion Ooh, look at those nails Yikes, that's like a dinosaur. Here's the thing with the hands. You'd have to get somebody that has very long, lanky, skinny hands. Like if we were to recreate this in a scene of a movie, if you want it to look that way, you'd want somebody that has very specific hands. This person has like multiple fingers, like an extra finger it looks like. So that would just be a prosthetic. Wow, this is a lot. Oh, so there's a person on top. The actor that's like kind of on top would be done in makeup. That would require a bunch of prosthetic pieces, most likely. Silicone, very intense paint job. I mean, it's literally the entire body completely painted. This guy would be pretty much all prosthetic effects. He has a receding hairline, so that's something I would address for sure. If the actor, depending on what their hair, the state of their hair was in to start with, I would address that accordingly. So if he had hair, what we would need to do is we would need to put them in a bald cap. So the rest of them, so the, the hair piece would just be something you would glue on, much like a mustache, but it would be around the, just the temples into the back to make that horseshoe receding hairline look. Yikes. Okay, so yeah, same thing. It would just be even more than what I I was assuming. So he has like an entire chest area that we're seeing. Yeah, and he's got like some cuts on his head that I would definitely add in there. That could be done with a prosthetic silicone piece. Yeah, he's dirty. Is he naked? I just saw his butt. So that's a whole thing. We do that. I'm professional. Sometimes you gotta put makeup on the butt in other areas. Oh my. No, Little fake. <laughs> Yikes, a giant. So his teeth are really disgusting and creepy. They're sharp. With something on set, I would always try my absolute best to request that we get dentures. That's not something I do. That would be something that there would be a specialist that specializes specifically in teeth where the actor would have to get their teeth, like a cast of their teeth, and then they would make it according to that so that they could just like snap them in. And then the person that does the sculpting of the teeth would then create that specific thing. I have no idea how they do it. It's something that if I've ever had to do it, I always like have somebody else do it. Chilla serum courses through his veins. The glowing eyes, unfortunately, that's not something that technically is, you can't do that with makeup. But what you can do is you can have contacts. I think there might be contacts that glow in the dark, but it would be a neon color. It wouldn't necessarily be white, at least to my knowledge. So thing with contacts is, speaking on a legal aspect, makeup artists are not licensed to do contacts. So on a set, we hire the a lens tech. So they are the ones that fit the contacts, they're the 
ones that put the contacts in and they basically are on set to just be there for contacts for the entire time. But basically the whole reason is because different bacteria is in the eye and some people have certain eye shapes. So if you have a generic eye lens that you know a lot of people come across nowadays, sometimes it can do damage to the eye. If you're going in the direction of on a film set, you want to take every precautionary measure to make sure that the actor is as safe as possible. But for the glowing effect, I think that that would definitely be something that would be in the editing room. It would definitely be CGI. The guy that we just saw with the red eyes, the face 100% totally could do with makeup. Once again, I would do the effect of having the lights in between some sort of prosthetic piece and then clicking them on and turning those red lights on. You have to make sure that the eyes are very protected though. That's definitely to make note of that because it's very bright having lights that close to your eyes. So his teeth definitely would require dentures. He has like very specific teeth. That's not something that you can find at like a Halloween store or you know a, a makeup store. That would be something you would have to sculpt and it would have to be done by somebody that specializes in teeth. But the face itself, like that's definitely something that could be sculpted. It's definitely a full blown, like it would be the easiest to just get a, something like an immortal masks, you know, pullover mask. <laughs> So the Demogorgon, the body makeup is very much a lot of paint and some prosthetic pieces, but the face itself is a full-blown prosthetic piece that has elements of puppeteering to it so that it can open and close. That is something that is not done by the, the actual actor. It would be something other than the actor that would be pulling open that, the kind of like flower element to it. And then having some sort of like ultra slime or something like that inside because it's definitely like you can kind of see all the different nastiness that's like saliva and nasty. So you'd have that inside and so when it opens, that material would then kind of have that saliva effect. It's a goddess. I love it. You'd have a full blown headdress which doesn't necessarily go under makeup per se. So here's the thing with creating a ghost. Typically, they're always gonna be lit in a very dark room. So in this instance, the only light source would be the flame. So she is very, or the ghost is very not well lit. So you have to make sure that the coloring that you're using, the colors will be seen. So if you go too dark, sometimes you won't be able to see. Ooh, okay, this is great. So I'm obsessed with clowns. Like as far as special effects goes, I could do clowns all day. There was actually something I worked on where we had like 150 clowns for this ad campaign and it was insane. Wow. This is pretty cool. This is a lot of wardrobe to really make this like a complete character look or creature look. The eyes are glowing, so that's another thing that would be added. Oh, so this guy has like some weird kind of mask on. Okay, well his mask is very specific. It's not as traditional. Jason obviously is just a hockey like mask. And that in this game, it's a very different take on it. So they would just, once again, I mean, to get the feel of a mask, it would be a mask that would be created in the makeup, like the effects department. We would just put it on. His character looks like he's wearing a mask. For something like this, it wouldn't bug me if there was a mask that we put on and we put it on top of the face. So what I mean by that is it wouldn't be imperative for me to have him sit in my chair and we take a bunch of time to take a prosthetic piece and blend it and make sure that everything is seamless. So this is very much something that would be sculpted and created for the particular actor that would be playing this character. The teeth would be added in the actual like mask itself and then just applied to the person depending on exactly how it would be sitting on it on that person's face. So that was a lot of fun. I always have so much fun doing recreations of old classic horror film. I really enjoyed all of those different looks and sharing what I would do with you guys. So if you liked this video, definitely make sure you go to Gameology on YouTube or on Facebook. And if you liked me, you can find me on YouTube, What It Takes TV, or you can find me on Instagram, at amber.talarico. I will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Oh, wait, this guy, okay. Hello, I am Amber Talarico. Wait a second. I think the first one was perfect and I'm trying way too hard to get back to exactly the wording on that and I'm thinking too much into it. Hey, that was really fun, blah, blah, blah. And then this, and then me.